Today, we are taking a tour of the Find My Past website and how it might help you with your genealogy when we come back. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. And well, Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Make sure you're hooked up with all that. Links are in the show notes below this video. Now, this is not sponsored by anyone. I just wanted you to be aware of what uh, is available at Find My Past. If you like what we end up doing here, give us a thumbs up and hey, consider becoming a channel member. You can hit the join button to learn more about that. All right, today we are joined by Alex Cox, all the way from the UK. He is the PR manager at Find My Past. He is uh, giving us a tour of the Find My Past website and what it has to offer us. Alex, I am super excited to have you on Genealogy TV. I know this is your first time here. Hopefully we'll get you back many times, but today we're taking a tour of the uh, Find My Past website just to give everybody kind of an idea of what you guys have to offer. And I'm going to let you just run with it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me on. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, anytime, any opportunity I get to kind of spread the word about what we do, particularly in North America, I will, will grab with both hands. There you um, go. So yeah, we've been, um, I think it's fair to say we are the oldest and well, the longest established and leading provider of online family history services in the UK. Uh, we've got a very long heritage. We started out back in 2003 when we were the first people to provide online access to um, the civil registration records for birth, marriages and deaths in the UK. Um, and yeah, ever since we've been publishing records like our lives depend on it. Um, and one of the things I think, I guess the best way to, to promote Find My Past to your audience would be um, if you have roots in the British Isles, you really should be using us at some point in your research. Uh, we, we're very proud to say we have the largest collection online for the British Isles. Uh, we add new records to the site every single week. And we're not showing any signs of stopping or slowing down. So yeah, every new day is a better day to search for my past because there's more records there to find. Well, I'm just uh, starting to dip my toe in that water as well um, because I am, you know, jumping the pond as many of us are, um, you know, tracing our roots backwards as everyone should be doing. And as we get back, uh, you know, I have a UK and Scandinavian and, you know, a lot of research to do back there. So I can't wait to get this tour. So let's jump over there and, and, and take a tour. Brilliant. Well, I will show you, uh, if you come to our lovely website, the first thing you will probably see, um, if you're coming to find my past for the very first time, uh, this is what you will see. So scroll down the page a little bit and tell you a bit more about what we offer and what you can do with Find My Past. So one of the first things we will encourage you to do is start your family tree, um, which you will start by putting in your own information. Um, and then very quickly, our, uh, we will ask for a little bit more information about your parents. The same we will go for your, well, your grandparents. If you know their names already, Great. If not, we will start suggesting potential matches. And then as you move along, we'll add your, we'll find your great grandparents. Um, and that's when hints will start to kick in. So hints are obviously available on virtually all online family trees now. Um, but I think one of the things that's special about Find My Past hints is the pool of records that are hinted against, the largest online collection for the British Isles. Um, also, we offer tree-to-tree -tree hints as well. So if you have a common ancestor shared in someone else's tree, we will suggest that as a match to you. And again, while that isn't necessarily unique to us, if you're a North American researcher looking to trace your roots back across the pond, a tree-to-tree -tree hint from a British researcher can actually be of massive help. You're benefiting from the research of someone in the UK who knows the geography, who knows the lay of the land, who was brought up in that culture, and understands the history probably a little bit better than a non-native would. Uh, and yeah, that can be of, of, of massive benefit. So we recommend anybody starting a tree on Pharma Pass. That's free to do. Um, also, anyone who registers to Pharma Pass will get a two-week free trial, um, which you can actually get quite a lot done in two weeks. 
Another thing I'd like to recommend everybody do as well is check out our blog. Um, so we have a very active blog. We publish on it all the time. Uh, you've got various sections such as getting started, tips on building your family tree, DNA, um, case studies on the various record collections we publish each week. Sometimes we get really weird and wonderful things. We don't just go for the big. Uh, we think that every collection is important to someone no matter how niche it might seem for someone that could be the missing piece in their jigsaw puzzle so if we can publish it we will uh and we're also a company of enthusiasts as well uh we're not we're not as big as some of our competitors but pretty much everybody who works in farm at farm my past is a family historian uh we love what we do we we believe in it wholeheartedly and we we do our we do our own research so we use the blog to show that off. Um, but what you can also do is go to the what's new section of our blog here, and that will basically keep you up to date with all the new records we add each and every week. So every Friday we drop new records. Let's have a look at last Friday's because it was a, it's a good example. So this Friday we released about 41 million new records from uh, the Gazettes which are the official government newspapers, which we use to share official notices, things like insolvency, court cases, deaths, key appointments, positions, all those kind of things. And last week we published, um, yeah, between 34 and 40 million of them dating back to the 17th century. So great context builders. So yeah, every week we are publishing new things. Um, so once you have registered an account and you're logged in, this will be, this is your dashboard. This is one of the things that will form kind of the, the hub of your, your research on Find My Past. So here, you know, welcome back, Alexander, which is my name. Uh, you can quickly search across all our 14 billion records from the search or record box there. Uh, you'll also get, so here, there's the latest hint that's been found on my tree. And as we are adding new records every week, you will often get new hints that weren't there the week previous. Um, here you can continue, you can dive straight back into your family tree from here. You can have a look at the last ancestor you viewed on your tree, just a good way of keeping up to date with where you last were. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've often got several ancestors on the go at once. So uh, that really does help me pick up where I left off. Um, and another thing is our free research guide for British and Irish roots. So that's something I read. It's completely free once you've registered. Uh, even if you just register and download your guide, uh, it's worth doing because, as I said, we are a British company. We're based in the UK. We've got a very, we've got a lot of very knowledgeable people working within Farm My Path. We we live and breathe this stuff, and we do like to think we we know what we're on about. So uh, yeah, we any anything we can do to help people get started, we will. Do. I just downloaded that about ten minutes ago. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I, I hope you enjoy. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit further, you will get your uh, DNA breakdown. So. We do also provide a DNA service. Let me just bring up the page. So yeah, so uh, we launched our DNA service last year. It's uh, run in partnership with Living DNA. Our kits are powered uh, by Living DNA. So this is the UK site we're looking at now. Um, and I think one of the things we like, one of the things we like to think is special about our DNA test is the level of detail it will uh, boil down to in the British Isles. So as well as finding out which country within the United Kingdom you're, you're from. But yeah, so as you can see here, you can, you can uh, break, you can go on your regional breakdown, sub-regionals, which will tell you exactly which counties in the UK, like X percent Lincolnshire, Yorkshire, uh, which is just an extra level of detail. And what we also like to highlight is the fact that given that we have such an expansive collection of UK records, it's often hard to know where to start looking. And if you know you've got a, gen DNA, a genetic marker from a specific region, say Yorkshire, then you know that there's a chance some of your ancestors may be in our, our Yorkshire Parish collections. Um, scrolling a little bit further down, uh, you've got quick links. So we break down all our record collections into the following categories, birth, marriage, death. That would include things like parish, civil registrations, wills, probates, um, memorial records, things like um, monument inscriptions, all that kind of stuff. Census land and surveys. Um, so like all the other family history websites, we have complete national censuses from 1841 up to 1911, not to mention the 1939 register. Uh, we've also got a pretty expansive collection of directories and social history records. There'll be things like um, business directories, post office lists, 
Um, great ways of finding out where your ancestors were at any given points in time, but also what they were doing and their place within their local community. Uh, and got, where are these census records? What countries are these census records from? So we have um, complete 1841 to 1911 census returns for um, England and Wales. We have Scottish census returns from 1841 up to 1901, I believe. 1911 census for Scotland is uh, available on Scotland's people, which is run by the Scottish government. And the 1939 register similarly covers England and Wales because the law in Scotland is a little bit different with how they, the, the government deals with, with historical records. Um, we've, got a very, we've got a very expansive collection of military armed forces and conflict records. I, I, I mean, a personal favourite of mine is our British Army service records that date back to the 1700s up until just before the Second World War. So even if your ancestors were fighting for the British during the American War of Independence, the wrong side, should I say, uh, you will probably find you, you, you will find details of their service in there. Uh, and our newspaper collection, which I, I do like to say is a bit of a jewel in the Find My Past crown. Um, the, our collection of British and Irish newspapers is run in partnership with the British Library. That is in, entirely exclusive to us. You will only find them on Find My Past. We're at 38 million pages now. It's a, it's a, it was a 10-year project that's just carrying on, and it's an absolute treasure trove. There's, I'd best move on, because I could, I could, I could eulogise about newspapers for ages. I love uh, newspaper research. It's, it's fantastic. There's nothing like it for colour and depth. really isn't. Um, and then travel and migration records, which for your audience will be very important. You know, tracing your routes across the Atlantic, finding out when your ancestors arrived in America, um, where they came from. And that's something I should also highlight as well. We are not, our records aren't just for the UK. We also have um, a, a growing collection of records in the US. We've got a very large collection of US marriage records, as well as births and deaths. Uh, like Ancestry, we also have US census records, um, all the ones that are currently allowed to be published. They're also accessible on the site. I mean, not to mention thousands of other collections from US military records to, to state by state records. To oh, it, it, There's so much, it's hard to keep track. But I should probably start showing people how to actually start finding this stuff. So, um, yeah, this is how you actually get into it. So as I said, you can... You can search across um, all our collections in one go from here. So you can select by country. So if you click on the drop down there, you've got Australia and New Zealand, Ireland, Britain, England, Wales, Scotland, uh, United States, Canada. Um, we, we represent Commonwealth countries very well as well, of course, being a Commonwealth country. Also, well, I guess it's Britain a Commonwealth country. I suppose we are. We, 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 we kind of started it. Um, so yeah, we were a nice spread of records from different parts of the world, but our real strength is British and Irish. So you can do a general search from here. You can filter down by category. So if you, for example, if you click on census land and surveys, um, you can pick between censuses, courts and legal records, electoral rolls, which are an often overlooked resource, I think. Electoral rolls are fantastic census substitutes. Um, the, unlike censuses, they were taken every single year rather than every 10 years. Uh, and we have a, a very large and exclusive collection that we also run in partnership with the British Library, dating from 1832 to 1932. So a fantastic way of tracking ancestors between the censuses. So, yeah, one thing you should very much be aware of is our records A to Z search. So... As I showed before, you can search across multiple collections. In fact, you can search across, across all collections at once and then narrow down as you go. But my, one, I would really recommend um, visiting this page here. So if you go down to search, you've got all the different categories here, but go to our A to Z of record sets. And here, you, it's a great way of finding out what we've got. So for example, you think your ancestors might be from Yorkshire. Pop in Yorkshire. And here you can see all our different collections coming up for Yorkshire. So we've got a fantastic collection of parish, bands, baptisms, burials, burials and marriages. You can see the record counts for each collection there as well, uh, as well as all sorts of bishops' transcripts, registers and records, quarter sessions, all sorts. Um, but the reason I wanted to highlight this is, as well as the category pages, every individual collection on Find My Past has its own dedicated search page. 
So, for example, let, let's use census as an example. So if we do, uh, if we're looking to do a broad census search, so we'll click on census land and surveys. So we, here you can search by name, when, where, other household members, very useful for narrowing things down, record sets, da 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 da. But if we go to the dedicated search page for the 1911 census, you will see that you have loads more options available to you because it's specifically tailored to that individual collection. So you can find, you know, you can search by the parish, registration district, marital status, occupation, all of which is really, really handy for narrowing things down. And you've also got the added benefit of you're only searching in 1911. So all the results that are coming back will only be from that year, only from that collection, uh, makes things a lot easier. Another thing I also like to highlight as well is on each of these dedicated search pages, most people miss it because it's hidden at the bottom. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you will find all the contextual information you could possibly need about that collection. It'll tell you what the records re will reveal, um, the, uh, the historical context behind it, how this record collection came about, why it was created, how it came online, um, all very, very useful things to understand um, um, and other information you might need as well. Your search tips, for example, things that help uh, narrowing things down, all stuff like the various census references you can add as well, um, all sorts. Uh, I, we could spend hours going through all the content, but it's, it's definitely worth looking at because it really- Let me ask help. you a quick question. The census records are available from what year to what year? So they're available from 1841 up to 1911, but we are currently transcribing, and we're very excited about this, the 1921 census for England and Wales. We were very, very proud to be selected as the National Archives uh, chosen digitization partner for 1921. That will be coming online in January 2022. It's such a fascinating project. It's almost a bit of a once in a lifetime because, of course, the, the 1931 census was destroyed during the Blitz. Um, and the 1941 census was never taken because the Second World War was in full swing. So this will be a, a once in a lifetime release for many of us. The next census won't be till 2052. Um, and given that it, it spans such an important period of British history, you've got the veterans from the First World War, you've got uh, newly enfranchised women in the workforce for the first time. It's it, truly fascinating. And also what people forget was that there was huge amounts of emigration from the British Isles to America in the, throughout the 20s, 30s, 40s, even into the 50s. Um, so people tend to think of the, the, the emigration story from Britain to America as one that's far back in the midst of time. It's not. It was much more recent than people realised. People were still coming over from England in their droves up until the 50s. Uh, so I always like to remind people of that. Um, Good point. Uh, but apart from the censuses, Green, we are the official home of the 1939 Register. Uh, we were the first people to publish this online, in this, again, in association with the National Archives back in um, 2015, I believe. Um, but the 1939 Register is a, a fascinating document. It not quite a census. It's when a census is almost a census, but it isn't. So um, this was produced on the eve of war being declared in Britain. Uh, it was it was integral to the war effort. It was used. It was the largest audit of the civilian population in, in British history, really. It was used to work out where people were, what they were doing for, for work. Basically, who could be sac not sacrificed, but who could be requisitioned for the war effort? Because you don't want to send all your coal miners, because then who's going to dig the coal? Uh, it was also integral to rationing. But it's just, it's a wonderful slice of history. It really is a, a snapshot into Brit a Britain on the brink of cataclysmic change, really. Britain was never the same again. Um, but yeah, fascinating document. So here's the general 1939 search page. You can do an advanced search, which will again give you many, many more search options than you would normally get. Uh, if my Wi-Fi connection plays ball. So you go, you can pop in loads more information here. And again, if you're interested, you'd find out all the contextual information at the bottom of the page, as well as loads of useful links and resources, collections that are also linked to this. So things like our kinder transport red registers. These are the records of Jewish refugee children who were brought into Britain before hostilities had begun. Some of them will be found in this document links to 1911, Merchant Navy records, all things that could possibly have a connection. Um, 
But if we go back to, oh, sorry, if we go back to the uh, May 1939 page, what you'll find in there, you'll find images of the original documents, you'll find maps um, or, of the area in the 30s, in 1911, and in 1888 to see how things have changed over time. You'll also get statistical breakdowns for the region, because again, we, we, we do think social history and family history go hand in hand. And understanding that context, and knowing what what experiences your ancestors would have had, the sites they would have seen, the things they would have been talking about is, is just as important as names, dates and locations. Um, and yeah, there's, there's loads of other content on there about how, contact, get, how to search it, um, life in 1939. But to just give you an example of what a great piece of history it is. So we will pop in um, the king, why not? And here we have His Majesty the King. Uh, Captured in the 90s. I, I love this because I just love imagining when the enumerator turned up at Buckingham Palace uh, asking to enumerate the king, you know, occupation. And you can just imagine the blank looks being given. Um, so as well as the king and queen at Buckingham Palace, you also have the various members of the royal household. So uh, equerries, lady in waitings. And then if you look at an image, this will give you an idea of what the actual images themselves look like. So let's I love it. out a bit. So here yeah, you've got, what a household. This is all for Buckingham Palace. So there's a lot of staff. Um, and these will all be the great and the good. So Sir, Sir Melville, Sir Laskell's assistant private secretary, Aquarius the King, lady in waiting, superintendent of Buckingham Palace. Um, and what you will also see occasionally when looking at 1939 records is this, redactions. Because the 1939 register was a living record up until the 90s. It was used as the foundation for Britain's National Health Service. So it was being updated up until fairly recently. So for that reason, anyone that is under 100 and assumed to still be alive, we have to redact. Um, but we're constantly updating that and opening up new records as we go. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to talk about is our collection of parish records. Um, because again, that is one of the things that sets us apart. We have the largest collection of British parish records available online, uh, and it's constantly growing. Um, parish records are an amazing resource. So, sorry, when you're doing your British family tree, um, the first thing you'll probably come across are GRO records. These are General Register Office records of birth, marriages, and deaths. These date from 1837. That's when uh, civil registration was made law in England and Wales. Uh, dates are slightly different for Scotland and Ireland, a little bit later in Scotland and Ireland, I believe. But prior to 1837, your only, re your best possible resource for, for build, skipping back through the generations are church records of baptisms, marriages and burials. Uh, and we're quite lucky uh, in England in that um, we have... Um, Many of them survived, dating back to the 1530s. Again, a lovely slice of history. This was all thanks to Thomas Cromwell, who was Henry VIII's uh, main fixer. So when Henry VIII got divorced, uh, and famously got divorced and booted the Catholic Church out of England, his, his right-hand man, Thomas Cromwell, realised that they had a real opportunity on their hands uh, if, in that running births, run, running the churches, everyone got baptised, married and died, deeply religious society, they were able to keep closer tabs on the population that had ever been possible before. And as a result, it was made law. So we have all these um, church records dating back to 1538, when Henry VIII was still sat on the throne of England. Uh, and if your ancestors are in the correct counties, you can find out an incredible amount of information. Uh, they're very, they're brilliant resource. And, and you'll find all kinds of weird and wonderful things in there. So one of my favourite examples are the um, parish records for a church called, for, for a parish called Sea Salter in Kent. Uh, and Sea Salter Parish, the vicar there was called Thomas Patton. He was described as half mad, impudent and poor. Uh, and he, he held the vicarage from 1711 to 1764. Um, but the thing I love about him so much was how he was insane. He was actually insane. So let's have a look at one of his records here. Um, share screen again. So this is the marriage for Hannah Matthews and John Housden, who got married on the 6th of June, 1744. And if we have a look at the image, because again, always look at the image. If you've got options of transcripts and images, look at the images. But you can see the history pouring off the page here. It just looks fantastically old, doesn't it? It's 
So I'm not going to try and read it. So that with the entry we're seeing is so where I'm hovering my mouse. This is the, the marriage of John and Hannah. Um, and basically what uh, Reverend Patton did was, as well as record the essential details of the marriage, he would also place his own commentary on his parishioners. And it wasn't... It wasn't that Christian, let's just put it that way. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't particularly kind in his words. So what did he say about um, Thomas? So he said, so his notes that we were just looking at there, he said, John Housden, widower, a young gape-mouthed lazy fellow, marrying Hannah Matthews, hot upon an old toothless wriggling hag, both of Faversham were travelled by licence in Seasol to buy me a Caspian bowl of well-acidulated well glim, glimmergrim, whatever that means. So, yeah, he was heaping scorn on his parishioners. You'll find, find things like a rapscallion soldier. And, and, but that, that, it's just, I, I like these examples because... Great story. It's, it's history. That's what we're looking at. And, and, yeah. and many of these records, you will be the first person to see them in hundreds of years, with the exception of maybe the person who digitised them and, and put them online. Yeah, they're just waiting to be discovered. Um, as well as parish records, um, another thing I always like to highlight, as I mentioned at the start, is our newspaper collection. We are, we're so, so proud of our newspaper collection. Um, as we both agreed at the start, that newspapers are unrivaled in their ability to add colour and context. And you'll, you can find things in new, details in newspapers that you simply won't find in any other record. Like I found a marriage notice for my great, great, great aunt the other week. And as well as telling me the names of some of the guests, it told me the colour of dress she wore, the food that was served, who gave speeches. It was like I was there. And, and you wouldn't find that in a church register. Um, but anyway, so if you wanted to search our newspapers, you'll see this top navigation bar here, you will see across the site. Wherever you are, you'll see it. So you can always drop that down, search by our various collections, check out your DNA, keep tabs on the records you've recently viewed, or go back to our blog. If you want to search for newspapers, they, they sit outside our main collection. So you can't search newspapers from search all records. You will always have to go to newspaper and periodicals. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's, it's massive. <laughs> it's a big collection. We're currently at 38 million pages and we're adding new titles and new pages every single week. Um, you can search by British, Irish, um, US and world newspapers, but also the periodical source index. Actually, I almost forgot to mention that. I'm glad I've reminded myself. Uh, the, period, the periodical source index is um, another unique resource that's incredibly powerful for researchers in North America. It is a project we run in partnership with Allen County Library, I believe. Um, Great and, library. Yeah. I'm, I, I can't begin to do them enough praise. The amount of stuff they have is is insane it's crazy we, we we have we don't even have all of it we've just got a bit of it and and it's, it's vast so percy is basically a treasure trove of all their various articles photos any other material you probably wouldn't find using traditional search methods it might be uh, local histories published family histories um almanacs, all, all sorts. I mean, one of the things I found in there was the diary of a parish priest from like 1711 or something and talking about lightning strikes, killing cows in the field behind him. Weird and wonderful information. But if your ancestor lived in that parish during those, ta the, during those years, what an insight you're getting there. Yeah, that's anyway, where the colour comes in beyond the facts. Totally. And, and, I th and I think really that's why most of us do this, isn't it? I mean, building your tree is incredibly addictive. It's, it's a great big jigsaw puzzle that, uh, that is incredibly relevant to you. But for me, it's, it's discovering who they were as people, what they lived through, um, what they did, it, trying to get an image of them in my head. That's where the real joy of it comes for me. Um, so yeah, build your tree. But then dig into the, dig in, search far and wide, find all the weird and wonderful stuff and see what you can discover. So with our newspapers, um, we do also hold the same collection on our sister website, the British Newspaper Archive. So um, the same collections are, avail are available on both sites. So if you are a subscriber to Far My Past, you, you don't need to visit British Newspaper Archive. You will also get those newspapers on Far My Past. The only difference is the British Newspaper Archive is built specifically around newspapers. There's a few more things you can do 
that you can't do on the Find My Path search. But on Find My Path, you have the added benefit of having newspapers alongside all the other records. Uh, so I'll have a quick look at newspapers. So here, as you can see, you can, you can filter by date range. We actually need to update our date ranges because last week, we published our oldest newspaper to date, which was dates from 1699. So we're now actually going back into the uh, 17th century, not just the 18th. Um, but yeah, so you, you can filter by uh, era. So from the 1700s up to the 2000s. Uh, and as you can see there, really, the lion's share of our newspapers probably comes from the late 19th, earliest, tw early 20th century. But there's still lots and lots and lots from from the, from the 1700s. I mean, one of the things not I'm quite more <laughs> I'm quite morbid in my interests, I guess. But one of the things I quite enjoy reading is the original not enjoy, but uh, the original reports of executions from Tyburn. What? So I don't, yeah. So I don't know whether your viewers will have heard of the Tyburn Tree, but the Tyburn Tree was the most notorious site of public executions in Britain, and I knew. <laughs> collection is so old so old that early publications were being printed while people were still being publicly executed at Tyburn wow. and you can, you can read these accounts with the famous gallo speeches you know because the, the condemned would be allowed to um, give speeches before they were executed until those speeches got a little bit too popular and the government decided we don't want people being sympathetic so stop that um, but yeah you'll find your famous highwayman in there it's just that it's amazing uh, you can it is also, amazing. That is cool. There's, yeah, there's some really, you can also read like, you know, you can read contemporary accounts of British accounts, contemporary British accounts of the American Revolutionary War. So you can see how the newspapers in London were reporting on George Washington, Washington the likes of Washington or Jefferson. And, and Or you can read, um, I don't know if anybody have, have ever seen that one. I can't, the brilliant TV series about John Adams uh, and about... Oh, yeah. His, his first um, diplomatic mission to England where he met the king. And the newspapers in Britain misreported it. They basically said that Adams was very much on the back foot and the king rang rings around him, which wasn't the case at all. But you can read those original reports from that day. It's, you can tell how enthusiastic I am about this stuff. I love it. You love your um, history too, I can tell. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I really do. So you can filter by place, um, which I... Yeah, so you can you can filter by specific towns, counties, um, regions. Uh, one of the things I'd like to highlight as well is that we now have at least one newspaper for every single county in the UK and Ireland. Um, yeah, I was going to say you have uh, a fair amount of of stuff for Irish research um, because I know there's a lot of interest in that over here as well. Yeah, our Irish collection as well is 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 incredibly strong. We've got um, great collections of Irish Catholic parish records going very far back. We've got Irish census record. Well, the ones that have survived the archives fired during the Easter Rising. Um, our, our Irish newspapers are just as good as our British newspapers because all this comes through the British Library. The British Library have been holding copies of practically every publication printed in the UK since the Stamp Act, which I think happened in like 1740 or something. Uh, so thanks to them, we, we have this lovely long continual record. But uh, I'll quickly show you my favourite newspaper. So as well as being able to filter by place, by county, by uh, article type as well, which is very important, um, you get advertisement, advertisements, sorry, uh, which are not only useful for understanding what kind of products your ancestors would be buying, the things that would have filled their homes, the things that would have, you know, formed part of their daily routines and their everyday lives. But if your ancestors owned businesses, I mean, one of the things that Napoleon said, I think, was that England was a nation of shopkeepers. <laughs> you know, many people will have shopkeeping ancestors. You can find adverts from their businesses, discovering how they promoted themselves, what they sold, articles, um, illustrated, miscellaneous, and family notices, which are a huge, a hugely useful resource. Those are um, noted, paid for notices of births, marriages, and deaths. Because most of the newspapers in our collection are local by their very nature, you've got a very good chance of finding a family no uh, a notice of your ancestors' birth, marriage, or death 
if the newspaper for that region and that time is online, you may well find it in there. And it's a great way of plugging the gaps left by other things like parish records, which might not yet have been digitised yet. So we have a great collection of parish records, but we haven't got them all. <laughs> no one does. And there are, there are many that are yet to be digitised. So family notices can be a great way of plugging those gaps. You can, one of the other things you can do as well is filter up by newspaper. And this is handy to find out whether the newspaper of your region is online. So say, I don't know, uh, where Chester, which is where I was born. Let's see what we've got for Chester. So yeah, we've got loads of Chester papers, Chester Chronicle, Chester Gazette. Um, actually, those others are places that sound similar to Chester, but aren't quite Chester. So I can see there we've got two newspapers for Chester, which I could search if I wanted to. But I'm going to look up my favourite, because just to highlight what a wonderful... Uh, historical gold mine this is so the illustrated police news in my humble opinion is the best newspaper that's ever been printed in british history um people at the time didn't agree it was actually called the worst newspaper in england at one point so we will cert- we will filter by illustrated as well um what what the illustrated police news did was it was the first newspaper to cater to working class tastes illustrated newspapers have become very popular but got the guy who established it mr george perkis realized that um working class readers formed the largest slice of audience out there so there was a lot of mo- uh, money to be made but also they loved hearing about the latest outrages assaults crimes they also love seeing them illustrated in gory detail. I mean, this is just a wonderful slice of Victoriana, I guess. I mean, look at God, I love it. You'll find like a duel with teacups. I mean, you can't get more British than that, can you? A burglary <laughs> at Pence. <laughs> yeah, a desperate struggle for life. Uh, and then you've got all these beautiful, beautiful etchings in illustratings, uh, uh, illustrations, sorry, of, of, of the news of the day. So this is this will probably be in relation to some kind of society story the baroness bird of coops or whatever but yeah it's just a, a a truly weird and wonderful newspaper but there are many 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 more like it yeah <laughs> newspapers are a great source of finding photos of your ancestors so if you're looking at searching during the world war the f- years of the first world war so for example actually we'll do a quick one now once we click on that filter we can even filter by specific year so if we look at, say, 1916, and a year we know was uh, not a good year for the British Army, we'll type in uh, roll or, or in memoriam. And then we will also look, article titles filter by illustrated. You had all these, um, well, during the years of the First World War, local newspapers would re- report extensively on... Um, the the fates of local men at the front so there's things like this are not uncommon in the slightest so you've got these photographic rolls of honor all the local men that had been killed in the fighting that week bear in mind these are the casualties from one week gives you an idea of how uh, how how how, what a brutal and awful awful conflict that was um casualty rates for the british armed forces were great tip though on how to research that yeah, it's a great way of finding photos, but I'm really just scratching the surface here. I think the best way to describe it would be uh, an, truly an archive of everything. It is an archive. All facets of life are covered. Um, Very cool. Yeah, you, will, you, you will find all sorts in there. Hey, I got a couple questions for you. Sure. I know that the uh, Mayflower uh, anniversary is coming up. Do you have anything specific on that? We have loads of very early immigration records. Uh, as I was saying at the start, if you're if you're at the point of tracing your your routes back across the Atlantic, that's probably a good time. And well, any time is a good time to use Far My Pass, but that's definitely when you should seriously start considering visiting us and right. checking the site. Uh, because as well as these um, large expansive collections that cover huge swathes of British history, I think while our parish records generally begin in 1538, we, we we've got burial collections dating back to the 14. In some cases, 1300s. Wow. So you really, yeah, you really can go way, 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 way back into early modern, bordering on medieval almost, uh, with some of our collections. Um, but a collection we were launched not that long ago, actually, which I will bring up for you now, our British and Irish Roots collection. Uh, we did, we compiled all of our North American records that identify a place of birth in either Britain or Ireland into one big super search, which we call our 
British and Irish Roots collection, which I will show you. So this is our British and Irish Roots collection. Um, so the hand-picked collection of about 98, 98, military re 98 million assorted records. Uh, this is all sorts from naturalizations to military records, to censuses, to draft registrations, birth, marriages, deaths. If they list a place of birth as, Brit as in Britain or Ireland, they'll make it into this collection. So yeah, um, in terms of Mayflower, we, we've got some fantastic early emigration collections. So for, I mean, if, let's, just, let's just type in Mayflower and see what we've got on that. Actually. We have so many, it's hard for me to keep. Yeah, there you go. Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Mayflower Passengers 1620, which is a passenger list of those original passengers. But more importantly, if you want to get an idea, as I said, it's always worth playing around in the A to Z with various keywords, topics, regions. If we type in early, what we've got here, we've got Britain, early immigration to Barbados, early immigration, uh, British officers serving in early America. We've got early immigration from Britain, 1636 to 1815. So fantastic for, you know, finding out when your ancestors came across and whereabouts they came from. In fact, yeah, as you can see, we've got loads of early immigration collections there. Yeah, another great tip there on the keyword search. Oh, yeah, always play around with A to Z and see what's in there. Well, let me ask you this. Do you guys have anything like a wiki? on on your site like if somebody's like has no idea uh about an area that they want to search or they just want to learn more about a specific record group or something is there is there a way that they can search for that uh especially for people who are brand new to to find my past yeah so my my advice there would be i mean obviously check out our visit our blog and see what's on there uh, we we post we write we, we update that very regularly is the blog searchable? Yes, the blog is searchable. Okay. Um, that's, I mean, I'll give you an example now. So here's one that, say you're interested about the 1911 census. Um, one of the interesting things about the 1911 census is the way it was used by the suffragettes in the UK as a form of, of civil protest. So you'll get, uh, here's just a bit of a blog on background, con background information, showing you the kinds of things they do. They spoil their census returns. No votes, no votes for women, no census. No persons here, only women. You know, great little slice of history there. <laughs> um, but my, my, main, my main pointer would be go to A to Z. So say, for example, you want to find out uh, about, I, I keep on coming back to Yorkshire, but that's just because I was searching. That's fine. I, that's because I was using it this morning because my mum's my mom's line is all Yorkshire. Uh, so let's have a look. You want to you want to you want to look up in Yorkshire. So Yorkshire baptisms, for example, just quickly there, you can see you've got nine million records. But go to the specific search page, scroll down past the search form. It'll tell you exactly everything that's listed in the transcripts and the images, all the different details you will get. It will also tell you more about the collection, what's included. It'll also give you a little bit of history on Yorkshire as well. Uh, or we hope this will be all the information you should need at that point, you know, about, about during its, its importance during the Industrial Revolution, which is important if you've got Yorkshire roots, because that affects population movements and communities and all these kinds of things. Um, it also, you know, you've got a bit of information there about parish records becoming mandatory in 1537, explaining the history behind the records and why they came about. Also, other little very inf uh, important information bits, sorry, other important details here. So about the fact that um, different laws passed over time. So, for example, it was illegal for other religious denominations to marry outside of Anglican parishes. So even if your ancestors were Quakers or Jews, you will still find them in these records. Okay. So, yeah. And as well as that, you will also find some, you'll occasionally find some interesting case studies and people we found in there. So like, here's William Barnsley Allen, who was uh, one of the most decorated British servicemen during the First World War. He won the VC, the uh, Distinguished Service Order, Military Cross and Bar, which was no mean feat. Um, it's not, not an easy thing to do. But the, the other thing we also recommend checking as well is this useful links and resources section here as well. So what you will find for every single parish collection is our parish list. So you click on our Yorkshire Parish Records parish list. So yeah, here is our Yorkshire Parish list. So what you'll what you'll see here is at first a list of all the different societies and archives that we work with to bring this collection online. So you find out where we've sourced the records from. But the most the most useful bit here is a list of every single parish covered by the collection, uh, the specific de date ranges covered for that parish. 
um, and the record count. So as you can imagine, this is very, very, very useful if you're wanting to find out whether we have the records you need. If you're at that stage, if you're at the point that you know you know your ancestors are from uh, Aldborough Parish. See, we've got it from 1813 to 1846. Yeah, so very, very, very useful. Always worth checking that out. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you have uh, the ability to for members to search other member trees? In answer to this question, at present, no. Uh, we yeah. are off, we do offer tree-to-tree hints, um, but this is quite an interesting time for the Farm I Pass tree, actually. We've been, we've been focusing loads of resource on developing it and improving it, um, and we recently rolled out an, a slightly new and improved version of our tree, which lays a lot of foundational work for much more substantial updates to come in the near future. So, sorry, tree to tree hints were only um, launched on Farm I Past relatively recently, I think late last year. Uh, but do very much watch this space. There's, there's much, much more coming. Um, there'll be more collaborative research features being announced in the coming weeks, actually, uh, very, very, very soon. I can't say too much at present <laughs> but yeah do 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 watch this space uh we we offer hints against all our birth marriage death um census military and some newspapers our hinting pool is something we're also looking at expanding uh and as i said at the start against other members trees um you you, you get tree to tree hints you can't actively search other members trees yet but that that will be something that will be that, that will come eventually. Okay, let me ask you this. So I did another episode a while back about uploading your uh, GEDCOM file for free uh, to find my past, and so I know that uh, they can do that. So, do you have any recommendations? So I've uploaded my tree there. I see a lot of hints. Uh, I guess my point is you can chase the hints and see what is available, even if you're not a subscriber. What else, uh, if anything, can a person do for free before they become a subscriber? So it, uh, is this during your free trial or simply through tree building? Just tree building. Tree building. So you can um, add, edit, um, you can... Well, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, really. There, just see what hints you've got, and and whether those are resources, whether that's information that's new to you, um, whether it's something you haven't seen before, uh, and then then explore the records that way. Um, yeah, if it isn't, if it's something that you haven't seen before, and you go, "Ooh, that looks interesting," um, you mentioned that there is a free trial. How long is that free trial good for? That is a two-week free trial, and there are various package options available to anyone taking out those trials. So we have our starter subscription, which is essentially all the basic tree building mm-hmm. essentials, the bread and butter record sets, your, right. your, 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 your censuses, your civil registration records. Um, the next package up in the US is our essential British and Irish uh, and that that really gives you access to almost everything, all parish, all military, um, all directories, social history, travel migration, everything that you'd get a hint for is covered. Uh, the final tier, which is our ultimate British and Irish, uh, that's basically everything plus newspapers. Um, and the reason we separate newspapers out is because it is such a big, such a big resource. Yeah. It's, it's so big. I mean, you're... I, I, I wouldn't even want to fathom how many individual records would... I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't fathom a guess at how many individual records are in the newspapers, but there's 38 million pages in counting, and each page will have hundreds of... Well, not potentially hundreds of names. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's huge. And, if, yeah, if you take out any of those um, free trials, you will have access to all the, the records that are covered by that for those two weeks. You can get a lot done in two weeks. <laughs> you put your mind to it. You really can. Fantastic. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I'd I'd love to come on again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I hope you found that helpful. If so, give us a thumbs up and hey, consider becoming a channel member. All right. It is time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.